The most popular documentaries, books, and TV shows understandably contain a lot of criticism for the Soviet Union's handling of Chernobyl. After all, they managed to blow up a nuclear reactor and then lied about it. In the case of the HBO miniseries, many in Russia and Ukraine have complained that the show rises to the level of anti-Soviet propaganda, but few realise just how much pro-Soviet misinformation about Chernobyl still gets repeated in popular media today. In rough chronological order, here are Moscow's top 10 deliberate falsehoods that people continue to fall for. Number 1. The reactor operators broke the rules by reducing power below 700 megawatts, which also rendered the test results invalid. In fact, there was no limitation on low power operation, and the personnel were trained to view this as normal. The turbine rundown safety test likewise did not require a high power level because the turbine always spun at a similar speed. Number 2. The operators disabled the emergency core cooling system, which would have saved the reactor. In reality, the ECCS could never have been activated in time to reduce the damage. The power surge happened too fast and without warning. 3. The operators blocked multiple automatic reactor shutdown signals, meaning that the safety systems would have otherwise prevented the accident. This is a great example of propaganda because it is based on the truth, but the facts are distorted. The operators blocked several shutdown systems, but they did so in accordance with the rules, and these signals were not directly related to the dangerous state of the reactor. 4. Some operators refused to violate regulations, but were threatened or overruled. Persistent rumours to this effect are largely contradicted by eyewitnesses, and we don't have any solid claims from people who were actually in the room. The simple fact is that the shift personnel, such as Akimov and Toptonov, likely saw little to be concerned about. Number 5. The personnel ignored a computerised warning to shut down the reactor due to a lack of inserted control rods. With this claim, propagandists have tried to show that the operators consciously violated regulations despite being aware of the danger. The truth of the matter is that no such warning was ever received, nor was there even an instrument capable of adequately tracking the reactor parameter in question. Number 6. The safety test created a power surge, so the operators tried to shut the reactor down. The actual reactor data showed that the power surge only started after the shutdown button was pressed, as a result of the flawed control rods. Furthermore, shutting down the reactor was always part of the test, and an earlier scram likely would have just made the accident happen earlier. Number 7. The reactor could only explode when all the control rods were removed. In fact, accident simulations have shown that the reactor was at risk even when the number of inserted control rods was higher than required by regulations. The seven propaganda narratives above are examples of the Soviets trying to deflect blame onto the low-ranking operators. Most of these claims were made by Valery Legasov at the conference in Vienna. His report salvaged the reputation of the RBMK's designers, but only temporarily. The next three examples of misinformation represent the Soviet Union's attempt to present itself as the heroic country that saved Europe from a nuclear apocalypse. Number 8. Radiation releases from the ruined reactor were halted by dropping lead and boron from helicopters. In other words, the Soviets claim that effective accident mitigation measures reduced radiation doses to the public. While the helicopter pilots were certainly heroic, researchers later found little evidence that the airdropped materials ever reached the core. This was because the reactor pit was obstructed by rubble and the visibly burning rubble was elsewhere in the reactor hall. Number 9. The meltdown was halted or mitigated by pumping in nitrogen and draining water from the building. This claim suggests that an even worse disaster was prevented by a timely intervention. However, all accident mitigation measures were actually abortive or too late. Ultimately, 
The meltdown and radiation releases seized on their own. There was never any danger of a secondary explosion that threatened all of Europe. And finally, number 10 regards the miners who dug beneath the reactor building to prevent its foundations from melting. This certainly happened, but the Soviets neglected to mention that the heat exchanger was never turned on. It was unnecessary from the start, because the fuel lava melted virtually no concrete inside the building. There are probably lots of reasons why these falsehoods remain so popular. Some of them just make for a good story. Others make people afraid of nuclear power. The last three examples create a heroic mythology around the liquidators. The earlier examples are slander that caused real harm and suffering to the accident's first victims. Whatever the reasons for the longevity of this propaganda, I think we all have a debt to the truth. As HBO's Legasov said, we should not just content ourselves with stories.